So I wanted to get back to the gold leaf videos that I've been meaning to do for a few months now. I'm sorry I haven't had the time to get around to them. So what I want to show you today is leafing with imitation leaf, which can be imitation silver, aka aluminum, Dutch metal, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to be using silver today and it's basically the same with variegated leaf and copper leaf and, and uh, imitation gold leaf too. What's behind me is my work. This is something that I do throughout the years. I've been leafing for about 10 years and about um, like five, six years ago, I really started doing this regularly. And um, what you see here is just exercises that I do on my own to test new sizes, to test new velvets that I find, sp uh, spinners that I build, all that stuff imitation leaf and gold leaf more so on the the real gold leaf because that's what i use most in my work but i want to show you what i have behind me and we're basically going to be doing that in this this video today and um it may look like i wasted a lot of gold but let me tell you i learned so much by wasting all this gold and uh you're going to be failing a lot when you start out but hopefully uh, my videos will help you out to um, have less failures. So let me show you this in a minute. I'm going to switch my camera around and I'll show you exactly what I do. All right. So these are all my different attempts in the last few years. I have more or some of these I just reuse, wipe them off with mineral spirits and start over again. So there's a lot of different things going on here. Um, some of this is trying new sizes, like a slower size, and I take notes on, you know, when I start laying, what temperature my room is, um, what I'm spinning with, either hand um, or by the drill, what velvets I'm using, and uh, the times I lay them out. And so it's time to get your size ready. I use Duck's Quick Size. It is an oil-based size, so when you're cleaning your brushes out, you're going to need solvents, mineral spirits, naphtha, um, things like that. So this can has the sticker on it. This other one doesn't. So what this reads, because some of them don't have this sticker, is mix thoroughly. This product must be thoroughly stirred prior to each use. Dryers will settle, affecting curing times and consistency. You need to do that with pretty much any oil-based um, paint that you're going to be using. So keep that in mind. Make sure you do that. I also add um, imitation gold one-shot. Now you can change the colors of uh, tint that you can uh, put in here. You can use blue, you can use white, it's really up to you. I like to use imitation a lot, even if I'm using silver, it's just what I'm used to. So I put a few drops in there and then I stir it up really good. Also to keep in mind, do not use any metallic paint to tint your size with. I've seen a few people try that when they are starting out and it's just a disaster. So don't do that. So you mix it really good. And then I'm gonna show you also a little tip when it comes to the brush. So I'm using this brush today. It is a Mac um, 1992. It's a quarter inch, I believe. Yep, quarter inch. So after, this is already cleaned and all, but after you clean the oils out, um, you still sometimes have thinners in here, especially if you're working with a quill. What you would want to do is put the brush um, between your hands and make sure you're not in an area where you're going to be working. You don't want this uh, flying onto the surface that you're working on, but you roll it between your hands really, well, really fast. That takes the solvents that are still in the middle of your brush and wicks them out. So you have less thinners already mixed into the hair which can um, distort the drying times with your size. All right, so I have this panel <clears throat> already pretty much laid out. These are the tape strips. I'm gonna be sizing in between each one. And then I'm gonna size them all together. And then over here, I'm gonna show you what a thick coat of size looks like compared to a thin coat of size and why it's important to try to always use a thin coat 
and then after 15 minutes pass I'm gonna lay leaf down on this one and then wait 15 more minutes and lay leaf down on this one and so forth 15 minute increments and then um, you can see the difference between burnishing them out so getting your brush in the size you really want to palette it very well you don't want to just palette to the middle of the brush you really want to lay that brush down into that size and go back and forth a few times if it's too, if you feel like there's too much on the brush just move over a little bit and continue palleting that'll take some of the size off your brush all right so here's my panel now I prepped this panel, I wiped it with a wax and grease remover first. Alright, so the temperature in my studio right now is around 80 degrees and the humidity is pretty high. I'm going to lay a thin coat of size down. And if you see me going over a few times, it's I'm evening the strokes out all right so these these areas I'm gonna apply a really heavy coat I'm gonna apply a regular thin coat like this and then I'm gonna apply another coat here I'm not going to use tape for these. These are just going to be examples that I don't need tape for. Um, and then I'm going to continue on another panel and show you something else too. So I'm going to do the really heavy coat. And then I'm going to do my normal thin coat next to it. And I'm going to just do another coat here. And this one I'm going to wait longer than an hour and five minutes to lay down size. That way you can see the difference between um, the hour and five and then maybe like an hour and a half or two hours. I'll, I'll determine how dry it gets. And then also I'm going to switch panels here. I'm going to take this black panel and I'm just going to size up a box. This is where I'm going to show you how to apply your own pattern leaf that you'll be making. And get back to this. Now you can see the different color tone between these these two right here. This one is much more darker. That's the one that has a lot of size down. And this is going to be very, very sticky. And this one is a normal thin coat and we'll get into that a little bit later. So I'm going to wait until 15 minutes pass and we're going to lay some leaf then. Another thing I want to show is now this is already a cut down book. Usually these are about five inches wide. And to get the strips, what you wanna do is take this. This is the binding of the book and this is the open side. And these are all loose sheets. So if you wanna cut strips, cut from the open end to the binding. Nice sharp pair of scissors. And then you have your strips and they'll be ready to go.
Also, I want to show, this is another cut down book, how to make your own patent leaf. Now, this is loose. You see it's loose, it'll move. You can get wax paper. This is just house, you know, kitchen wax paper. You can get this in the grocery store, in the bakery aisle, where, wherever they sell the foil and the saran wrap. You can take this, you can rub it against your arm, you can rub it against your shirt or your hair, get some static electricity going, and then press this down on the leaf, flatten it out, flatten it out, and it'll pick it up. And that will become your patent leaf, your patent imitation leaf. So when you go to, to stick it down on your size, you can stick it down and peel it up. If you peel it up um, gently, there will still be leaf stuck to this where it's not stuck down to the size. But you want to be careful that the wax paper doesn't stick too much into your size because that can ruin um, if you have to lay down next to it. Like if I was butting up another sheet here and this wax paper um, stuck into the size and it peels some of the size up, when I go down to stick in the area that went in, it might um, contaminate that area. So you just got to be mindful of that. Okay, so 15 minutes have passed. You can kind of hear the squeak. Now it is pretty sticky. But like I said, this imitation leaf is very forgiving. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I roll it out of the book. I'm going to fold a sheet down like that and the exposed silver I'm going to press ever so lightly on this side of the paper where this will stick into the size and then I'll roll the book out from underneath of it. So it's like this. I keep it up where this part is up so it's not going to touch down first. Touch down this area and then just roll that book out like that. That way it lays down as smooth as it can. Now this little area, then roll back just a little bit of the paper. Press down and then with this you can kind of just rip it, rip it at the edge. Now what you're going to want to do is take one of these sheets off the book. A lot of times you don't want to touch this. If you have oily fingers, you don't really want to touch your leaf. Press that in, especially on where the tape edge is and where your seams are. Here's a seam, we call that a seam. If you have nails, you can just gently run that along the edge of the tape there. So you know that area is down into the glue. Press down a little bit more. Now you can use a makeup brush or you can buy one of these from a gold leaf supplier. Your little excess gold mop. I went over that in the previous video. Now since all this is still open and I want to wait longer to lay, uh, to lay the leaf down, I want to protect that area so none of this floats into it. And you go with your stripe, get some excess off of your brush, and then go against your seam. Get as much excess off as you can. And get that out of your way. Okay. So you can see, see the stripe there? Now I'm going to take my engine turner. Now I'm going to do half of this with the drill and then half of it by hand. I have the Trizac spinner I showed you guys in the previous video about your tools.
So they're a little bit dull, because like I said, it's still tacky. I'm gonna show you, if you don't have one of these, you can have, you know, um, if you don't have one of these sanding discs, but you have something like foam, you can wrap a shop towel, paper towel around it around like the the foam or what have you if you don't have one of these discs and spin it you'll still get a spin effect but it's not going to be as sharp as that trizac paper now these are a little bit dull it's sunk in a little bit area which the video doesn't really pick up on especially with the imitation leaf but you can see some streaking in there. But I also want to lay down some on this, this one. That's the heavy, heavy coat. turn this now because this is wet you're gonna rip more so it's not that bad but there's a rip here and this is all crinkly so it doesn't really look all that good and if you're not gentle with your drill you can spin through it easily so that's because it's so wet and it's also very dull looking. And if it was even more wet than that, you can get that effect. If you're getting that, it's way too wet. And while we wait, I'm going to show you how that transfer sheet works. I sized that up, sized that area up before. This is what we did earlier in the video. I'm just going to try to lay the corner down. Press it into the size. Most of it does stay onto the wax paper. But that's how easy that can go down. And then you can remove the excess, but I just wanted to show you that's how you would lay a patent leaf. Okay, so a total of 30 minutes have passed, so I'm going to lay leaf down on this one. Now again, I'm gonna spin half of it with the disc and half of it by hand with the paper towel. Again, you can see that by hand is not as sharp as it is with the Trizac. Again, there's still some dull spots with 30 minutes in. Now my temperature in my room is still hovering around the 80s. So 15 minutes from now, we're gonna do this one. So this has been 
a full hour now. I'm putting size, I mean, a leaf on this one. I've got the squeak. So I'm going to show an example of uh, me pressing down heavily on this side and just gently pressing down on this side and show you the difference. So because an hour has passed, I really got to think about pushing that leaf into the size, get the edge real good. This I'm just going to not really pay attention. To it. I didn't really press the size down. Now keep in mind, I didn't press this side down. I don't know if the camera will pick up on it, but there's color. I can see my size all along this edge line here, here, all the way here. And that's because I didn't press down into that gap because this creates like a teepee when you lay the, the leaf down because the leaf edge, I mean, uh, the tape edge is so tall. Because I didn't press it down, I have all that area not stuck down. So I can either bring this in and then try to press it and make sure, you know, I try to get those edges leafed up. And a lot of times with imitation, it doesn't work. With real gold, you can get away with it more because it'll take it. Now press down again and it's not perfect. And that's why you should really press your leaf into your size when you're working with imitation leaf so you don't have to deal with that. But I wanted to show you what that would look like. So that's an hour out, it still spins beautifully, but you would just need to worry about if your leaf is going to take. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer for this to dry up, that way you can see what it really looks like dry. And this is probably the nicest batch that I see when it comes to spinning. This is today's 15, disregard all this, this was previous. So these are definitely a little bit more brighter than this. This is ever so slightly sunk or scratched through the leaf there. And this is by hand, this is by hand, and these are all by drill. And then I'll check back for when I want to lay down imitation on that. And that will be the too dry area. All right, so now this is probably going to be too dry. You can hear that knuckle squeak, but we are using imitation leaf, and it might be too dry for that because it's a thicker, thicker thing here. In this area, I'm going to lay down real leaf, so maybe we can see the difference a little bit. This is 23 karat gold leaf patent.
right through it. Where if I use velvet, it wouldn't. Let me go grab velvet. See, this is sunk. And that's two hours with real leaf. It'll stick and spin real nice. This is actually two hours in the imitation laid out. Um, there's some edging that didn't take. But then again, I had no um, tape on that. That took really nice, actually. If you wanted to clean this up and use it again, you can take a piece of tape, you can lay it down, press into it, and lift up some of that silver leaf. With real leaf, you can just throw some mineral spirits on it and it'll lift it up very easily. So I get that started that way. Wrap a rag with mineral spirits on it. See how easy it takes the gold away. You gotta work at it with the imitation leaf. Because it's a thicker material than the real leaf. So the more you get the imitation up with tape, the easier it'll be. So that yellow is the size. So that wipes away pretty easy. So now you can reuse this board again. And that's how you get the leaf off. But also another reason why you tape the edging when you're sizing and then you're, um, you leave the tape down for size when you're doing imitation leaf is that these little, it's basically a sanding disc. So if you're working on top of clear, you're going to be putting these type of marks into the car's surface, which is, you know, not always easy to explain to the owner. And, uh, but if you're clearing over it, all of it, then, you know, these will go away under the clear of course. All right, so this is a previous example I did. Um, this is talking about, I'm gonna talk about spacing right now. Um, these centers are all pretty consistent. And this is the, the gapping. And over time, you'll just get used to it. This is all over the place. So here's one center, here's one over here, here's in the middle, here's very close to the paint edge. This is up, down, kind of in the middle, you know, and these are all over the place. These are gapped differently a little bit. This is tighter, wider, tighter. So this is very, very inconsistent. So when you look down the edge of the car, like this, um, my camera's not going to show you, but this is consistent, this one here. This one is all up, down, all around. So you got to think about if you're looking at a vehicle like this, you want to keep it pretty even. Um, this one is not, I don't know if I can get that to focus. I'm kind of on the edge of my table here. And then also this one, this one's super uh, close together. Videoing these things is horrible. So um, these centers are really close together. So what you get essentially is just vision of the half spin, because here you are breaking it up again. You're overlapping so much that you're only really getting half the spin shown. So if you have, also if you have a wide stripe and the width of your spin 
your uh, burnishing tool is the same width as your, uh, your stripe that you're trying to work in. And if you do try to overlap them just like, you know, a little eighth of an inch wide, you're going to have all this gap area right here and here. That's not going to be spun, and it is. it does make a visual difference. You can see areas that aren't spun. Um, I can't really, I don't have an example of one that looks like that. But if you have a certain size spinner, now with this, it's either you would have to move in tighter and do a half spin where only half the spin is going to be shown and it gets really close together again. The centers are going to be like this one, very close together. You're not going to get a full effect of the, the nice um, round shape of your engine turn, but that will eliminate that gap. Now, if you either made a wider spinner where you just go over the edge ever so slightly. Now, this is an example of a bigger spinner. Now, here's the middle. Here's the middle. You'll almost get the full disc effect that, that way. And so on. Or you can just, if you only have this size, you know, if you have a certain size spinner, um, I was going to show you one. But if you have a narrow spinner, just make your stripe more narrow. But that's things that I, I've picked up on and, you know, maybe it's just me. Now, if you intentionally want, you know, spins where they're in the center here, in the center here, make sure you, that you try to not leave big open gaps between them.